Boys and lads, everybody, welcome to a new show. We are live. You see him right there next to me. I mean, he's, you know, I told him, I told him backstage, you know, I got Pete Davey on the show. That's it. You know, it's a, it, it's time to retire, man. It's time nah. to retire, brother. <laughs> man, listen, I'm, I'm so happy because I've, I've been watching this guy on YouTube for a long time. Definitely one of the guys that inspired me to come on and do this thing. And uh, you, you didn't tell people it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work to do this YouTube stuff. It's a lot of work, brother. Yeah, and you don't get paid for no. it. That's the problem. No. <laughs> it, it, no, uh, it, it is. No, we, we, we just talk about it, weren't we? We were just saying uh, before we went on air, like yeah. we, have, we have to give some, we have to give some love to the family sometimes as well. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, man. So I definitely appreciate you coming on. I know this is your day off, so uh, appreciate it, man. You know, it's it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, man, how you been, man? How's how's uh, you know how's how's just being being a, an influencer because you are. You guys are a nice channel, over six, over six thousand subscribers. The Loaded Mag and UFC, you guys know about it already. And uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, what has changed from the the Pete Davy the pre YouTube, or has anything changed, or maybe nothing's changed. You know, what, what what do you think, man? You know what, Chris? It's a great question. Um, uh, the, the the easy answer is nothing's changed, um, and and that's the thing that. I kind of, um, I, I, I keep hold of that because the, the me that you see now, um, doing regular YouTube shows with, with Daz and Chris on Loaded, um, with Pots on the, the, the 12th Man and all the rest of it, that's me. That That's me before coming on YouTube. Like, I, I'm, I live and die in Newcastle United. Like, I wake up, one of the first things I do, check socials on all things Newcastle United. It's the last thing I do before... I go to sleep at night. It's it's what I was doing before, talking tactics, reacting to the game. I'm just doing it now on a platform where I'm able to share my opinions and thoughts with hundreds, thousands of other like-minded Newcastle United fans. That's the only difference. And I kind of like, you know, that's the, the one thing that I hold on to is that, you know, you, you might see other people that have changed how they are. They may be more in tune with Newcastle. They're looking at things in a little bit more detail. They're, they're doing a lot more than what they were before. But for me, you know, I I, I hold that close to me that I, I haven't changed as a person. I am who I am. And I think you'll ask the loaded boys from when they first met me to now. I've not changed. I, I'll, I'll say it how it is. I'll give my opinion. Um, and and kind of that's, that's me. That's me. Yeah. But it, all I will say is, is that I'm just a lot more busier now. I've got to split my time, work, yeah. family, and now loaded and 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 the content yeah. out. So that's the only thing really, is is that it, how time consuming it can be because it is. It's you know, boys. It's 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 like an extra job at times. If you want to put oh, yeah. out content and do things right, you have to put in the time and the effort. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, man. I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, but you definitely got you guys are doing a, a, a wonderful job over there at the Loaded Mag and UFC. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, you got to go to that channel, subscribe. You know, watch these guys because they're 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 a blast. They're a blast. And uh, but let's go back a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna ask you your age. I'm not gonna be rude. But we we gotta you know we gotta go back in time. When did you become a Newcastle fan? Or was it you know were you already an adult or since you were little? You told me you're not from Newcastle. So how did that how did that work out? Very interesting and purely um, by chance. Um, I've, I've mentioned this story a, a few times. Um, my uh, me being from Leicester, uh, so I'm not from Newcastle. Um, I, I got into football a little bit later. I was sort of seven eight years old when football came around, and it was very much by chance, uh, coincidental. Uh, my dad who. Um, followed Leicester City. Um, yeah. He worked at a place called Walker's Crisp. So they used to sponsor Leicester for years in the 90s. Um, so we had that affiliation to the club. And he just switched the TV on one day. I think it was ITV. I always can't remember the exact channel, but I believe in my mind when I'm thinking back, it was ITV. And it was the game when Newcastle United beat Leicester 7-1 to get promoted to the Premier League for the first time. And Andy Cole scored a hat trick that day, and uh, both the club and the performance, and in particular Andy Cole, absolutely fascinated me. Seeing him score those goals, I was just like, "What?" I remember saying to my brother, "Like, who's this guy?" And my brother's older than me, so he told me a little bit about him because uh, he was more football savvy than me at that time. And 
that was it. Honestly, that was it. I was just hooked. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see them again. I'm not going to lie. The black and white stripes, I was infatuated by them because it was different to every yeah. other team, to, to Leicester that were, were, wore blue and, and on other teams as well. And it was just like, wow, Like I need to see more of this team. And just followed them ever since. Followed them ever since. Yeah, we're going on, what, 30 years now? Um, yeah. uh, to, to that point. And it's, you know, it's been a bit of a ride. I'm not going to lie. We've had some ups, we've had some downs. But look, um, when you love a club as much as um, I love Newcastle United, then you, you just roll with the punches. That's just the way it is. Yeah, man. Yeah, I wasn't going to say your age, but you know that 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 match was in in ninety two, ninety three. You do your math, uh, you know. But uh, it, it is what it is, man. But you actually you you joined Newcastle kind of in a good in a good era in a good time, you know. You had, you had the entertainers and all that stuff, and then of course. It went downhill once you know who joined or bought the club, but we're not going to speak about bad things. You know, we got Pete. We got to we got to keep it positive. Um, I mean, it's you know, it, it, again, it's 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 been an amazing uh, thing. But let, when you let's go back a little bit to when you, or fast forward literally to when you joined the the Loaded Mag, um, because you know making content uh, is it, obviously not a, not a not an easy thing. And at the time, you guys did. Not, I believe I'm going to say not a lot of people started. Not not a lot of people uh, were doing Newcastle content, you know, YouTube and all that stuff. I, I would say what three years ago, maybe that you guys uh, you became a part of that, and, and that's not even that long ago. You, you know, you got other channels that that are that started around that time as well. Uh, but what brought you to that? I mean, are you did you uh, create the the channel with with Chris, or how, how did that work out? No, I was actually the last one to join. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I was a part of the original group, uh, to be fair, initially. Now, for me, my sort of YouTube journey started a little bit earlier during lockdown. Um, so okay. um, with a guy called Clinton, Clinton Ford, Fumby, uh, we were the Geordies down south and we did regular content after games, gave our opinions and, you know, Clinton built a bit of following and um, I, I met quite a few people that I still follow even, uh, and they follow me even today off the back of that. And it brought me to another channel where I did some content during the, um, during the sort of like the, the COVID season where there was right. no fans in the stadium. Um, and that's kind of where I met originally um, the Loaded Boys, like Daz, Chris, uh, Martin, Richie, originally, um, and they were all part of that same channel. And and Daz, Chris, and Martin decided to kind of start up their own channel, um, Loaded, and they were doing sort of Loaded Football Weekly, so it was just general football chat rather than just Newcastle United. And um, that was kind of you know it'll be three years in May that I that I actually joined Loaded Mag NUFC. And um wow. they started it originally in the January and it was kind of like beginning of May of that particular year they asked me just to come on and 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 like join them for shows, give them my opinions and it was more sort of um Newcastle United content related. Um and then after that um they decided they wanted me to to join and, and and Martin dropped me a message and asked the question and and I was like yeah happy to join happy to join um I I preferred talking about Newcastle United content and I think we were just deciding as a group to go in that direction so we did and we kicked off from the end of May which is not long after I joined and we went bang straight into full-on um content um for all Newcastle United and look um, it took us to where we are right now because we absolutely love what we do. Um, we've we've evolved as a channel. We've been able to create new things, new content, and um, yeah, l l loving every minute of it. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's not easy. Like we talked about before, it's not easy putting content out there. And we could quite easily put content out there that would be controversial. It could be negative. It could be all the things that would get more subscribers and more viewers to watch a channel. But actually, we always stuck to our values and said, that's not really us. Like, we want to talk football. We want to talk football. We don't want to slander anybody. Body. We don't want to take the mick out of anybody. We don't want to right. jump on anyone's misfortunes. We just want to talk football. And if people want to come along for the ride and join us to talk Newcastle United and football, I'm bang up for that. Um, and we've been doing it ever since. I love every single se second of it. It's absolutely superb. So just yeah, man. Great journey. Yeah, it has. Paul, you got something? 
Yeah, I mean, what? how did you find doing a podcast in that COVID era? Did you find it like a bit of a distraction from everything that's going on in the, in the world or was it tougher? Do you think it's easier now or harder now or... Yeah, how do you find it in that in that period of uh, being stuck indoors? I'm not gonna lie, it helped me get it, it helped me get through. Um, I'll I'll go back to right at the beginning of lockdown, um, and I got a chance to actually say thank you to him. Um, if anyone knows George Colkin, um, a journalist for the Athletic, um, also on Pod of the Time as well. Um, if you haven't watched that, it's a great podcast. Um, mm. And. I remember it was around the time that the takeover was rumoured, um, sort of like end of April, early May, and I would wake up religiously for their podcast to drop to find out the latest and what was going on, Newcastle United. It brought me back to Twitter, really, X as it's now called, to follow that that process. And that that process, although heartbreaking when, when it didn't go through at the time, it actually kept me going. It kept me going because it gave me a focus. With everything else that was going on in the world, it gave me a focus of something to listen to and to prioritise my time every single day. And then the the YouTube stuff started a little bit later on into that summer and continued through. And it was a massive, massive key for me. Like, it was it was so important. Um, and it helped me get, get through for, for sure. Um, when lots of people were struggling with their mental health and having real difficulties managing day-to-day, being away from loved ones, um, it was definitely a welcome distraction for sure. Although we didn't get what we wanted straight away. Oh yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of work to do this stuff, and uh, you guys are are on your journey. Um, it, it, tell us a little bit about the loader mag and what you guys do. I, I want people to know right away what what you you know. How would you describe your show? What are you doing? Because I know you're doing uh, you do the previews, you do the match reactions. You know, I want I want people to know uh, what you guys are doing, so you you know they can go and, and look you up and find you. If they haven't already, uh, but first of all, how do you describe your group? I mean, you guys are pretty close knit, you know, trio. Yeah, we're a tight group, and um, we we talk every day. We're always on the chat together, talking about um, football news in general, where we can go and and deliver uh, more content, um, and how we can do it. Uh, we're just we're just about trying to make it the best quality possible, right. and being as thorough with what we talk about. Um, and, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to have three of us that, um, that, that that we like to think that we know football pretty well. Yeah. We like to think that we're quite balanced with our views um, and that we're quite passionate as fans about our views on the back of that as well. And we like to bring a little, something a little bit different. So one of the things that I mentioned to the Loaded Boys when I first joined Loaded Mag and UFC is bringing in a match preview. And I, I, I always had the away days idea of, um, doing a preview with opposition fans. Um, and and that was one of the things that we eventually brought in and we still do to this day. We have away days. We did one on Thursday um, with a Bournemouth fan um, and that's on up, up on the channel now. And for, for anyone that, w- that wants to listen, and that was just one little idea. And we were looking at working with other YouTubers or the Newcastle content creators and we did a lot of that. Um, Lee Lawler from Newcastle Fans TV, the likes of Paul from Toon Review, um, Matty from um, the Magpie channel and various others. We, we've worked with them all um, and we've enjoyed it and they respect us as much as we respect them. What then kind of came about is the opportunity to work with Jordan Cronin from Newcastle World and, and that's where it kind of really started to kick off for us because we developed the Fully Loaded Transfer Show. So um, working on the Fully Loaded Transfer Show for each of the January and the summer windows, um, having those journalists that are as close to the action and knowing what's going on with regards to transfers uh, and what's likely to happen and having those a part of it. Um, and it really took off and it's been a real good success. We've been able to build up trusting relationships with a lot of really good journos, not just Newcastle United journos now, national journos, journalists that report on European football across the board. And they trust us and, and we trust them. So what we've been allowed to do is really start to build the channel that way. And we're, we're, we're developing, we're topical, we'll talk about different topics. Um, Daz d- does a great show that's going to be coming up uh, very soon called Squad Game, um, talking about the players in the squad, who we're going to keep, who we're going to move on. And we have a great discussion. Daz started that a couple of years ago. It's been really, really successful. So, um, And we know, um, you know, 
other other channels like to use the same and, and it's great because it's allowing other people to to do their content on their channels too um so we we like to we like to give a little bit of everything but I, i'll go back to the point we like to be thorough with it we don't like to bring controversy we want to be thorough we want to give honest opinions but the one thing for us and you've got a good community here because i can see a few in the chat some that i recognize some that i don't um is that the fans and the viewers of the channel are the key they're so important to us and they mean the world to us we've got fantastic mods we've got great people i see people like the mighty win we've got les and a few others in the chat as well that, that that come and watch our channel too and um they are so important their comments their questions their opinions they drive us to continue to do what we do and they help mold each of the shows that we put together so all of that just makes for real good content and look we would love to be 10,000 subscribers 20,000 and above but for me personally the fact that we have that interaction with them and we get to talk on a level with them and yourselves as well and we get to do things like this come on to this channel and and talk with yourselves Chris and Paul about Newcastle United this is what it's all about yeah no, that's that, that's wonderful man and the fact that um that you're willing to come on uh, having a, a established channel i mean most people can say you know what let me go to a to a bigger channel so i can get some 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 you know notoriety and mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine but you know you choose to come on a smaller channel a channel that just started like this one we'd never met before so yeah. you know what i mean you don't owe me anything you know i don't owe you anything so but the fact that you do that it's uh it's pretty remarkable in the shows the type of character that you guys have it works both ways uh, chris and paul it works both ways because for us as a channel at, lo at loaded we remember when we were 50 60 100 subscribers and we were just starting out and mm. we remember those channels that were slightly bigger than us at the time that took a chance on us that said you know what i'll come onto your channel or yeah you come onto ours and and and, and, and you kind of share that love that way and um you know we're not, we're nowhere near with this the type of channel that we want to be in terms of how big we are but we appreciate everybody pe channels that are bigger channels that are smaller and for us it's a community feel like we want to bring everyone together um we're probably one of the the only newcastle united uh, channels that have brought all of the established newcastle united content creators onto one channel we we bring them together and we get to talk Newcastle United because some of these content creators, it can create rivalry sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people like that rivalry and they feed off it. We're not like that. We want to bring people together. We've been saying this for nearly three years now. And um, um we, we love we love that community feel because I don't you guys will know you've got social media. There is so yeah. much negativity, <laughs> so much rivalry, so much hatred in the Newcastle United timeline. It is unbelievable. And I I, I and the channel want to stay away from that. We just want to kind of talk about the positives and, and bring people together. And we might not always agree. <laughs> the slowly boys don't always agree on, on points with regards to Newcastle United, but hey, that makes that's what makes the the the, the conversation uh, so enjoyable. Yeah, that's, that's true, brother. Um, let's ask a question for Pete. Does having a brother as a journalist help your connection, with your connection? Um, it has, for sure. Um, Jonathan Johnson came onto our channel to preview the away days for PSG. He, he's, he is an outstanding French football journalist, one of the top, like, he does Sky Sports on a regular basis. They get him on because yeah. he knows his stuff. And the fact that when he was first starting out in his journey in journalism um, and being a PSG fan, seems to get older, reporter of French football, um, they got to know each other very, very well. And for me, like, like their, their connection allowed him to come onto the show with us. Like, I think without without my brother and knowing him, I don't think he'd have had any chance. I don't think he would have took a chance on us. But he trusted my brother, and so he trusted us as a channel. And actually, after that first show, he absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, he yeah. loved he loved it and really showed us a lot of respect off the back of that. He was going to come on for the second game, but couldn't um, due to work commitments. But he said, "I one hundred percent have you back." And and we're like I said, we're topical. So if there was it, we were linked with a French player or French based yeah. player, he'd come on in a heartbeat. And and so that's helped us to develop the channel off the back of that. Um, and there's a few others. Um, so I don't know if you guys know Saeed TV. 
yep. and Manchester United content creator, big content creator on the big six as well. He's he's a top top and he's a great guy. I came about him because he'd got Lee on the channel to talk about French based players. Um, and so that connection worked there and it's it, it has definitely worked. Um, but for me, like Lee, um, like he is, I, I get my knowledge of football through him because he's older than me and I've looked up to him and followed his knowledge of football. The fact that I know as much as I do about the European leagues is because of him because he's been a PSG fan since the early 90s. So he's followed European football, Italy, France, mm -hmm. Germany. And he allowed me to experience that and explore that in a bit more detail. I wouldn't be as knowledgeable outside of England if it wasn't for him. So he's he's a big reason for me being the way I am about football and seeing it from a bigger like a, a, a broader light. But definitely benefits one hundred percent. He's he's doing his thing. He's smashing it at the moment. He does a lot of um, freelance stuff. He works across the board. He's been working with Sky, um, Pete Graves, who we know quite well, uh, and, and Keith Downey and some of the boys at Sky. He does a lot of work with them, um, and he works across the board. So yeah, he's he's doing all right, and I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him yeah, because yeah. he's followed his passion. He was all about sport and fitness. If everyone's ever met him, he's a huge giant guy. Like he he works out. <laughs> A lot um but he that was his passion but he, he always had an additional passion for football and journalism and he he decided to go left and in a different direction and that, i i admire him for that fair play and, and you know the, the connections just to your point i mean it, it helps to get this person per se like steve wraith he helped me get nobi salina on the show and mm -hmm. but he 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 nobi comes to the door but i have to make sure I do the right job at talking to him, interviewing him. You know, you know, Steve is not going to do the job for me. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you still got to get the, you know, get the work in. And that's why when um, when I got um, Warren Barton and I asked him, you know, why, why he said yes so fast? Because he, he did. Yeah, sure. I come on. And he said, well, I watched your Nobi interview and it was great. So, you know, mm -hmm. and it, so it's, you know, it, it's even though you can we can have connections here and there. You still have to get the job done. You still have to do your part. If you're just a, any other channel out there, because anybody can create a YouTube channel, to be fair with you, and uh, you know you still gotta uh, put in the work. But uh, I mean, let, let, let's. You guys are doing a, a, an amazing job again. Loaded Mag and UFC, literally at Loaded Mag and UFC on YouTube. You're gonna find them, and uh, you know let's help them reach seven thousand uh, subscribers. They're they're almost there, halfway through. So you know they they, they got a lot of a lot of great content um let's talk about the tune pete you know we got to talk about the tune brother um and i guess i want to give you perspective i mean what do you think uh on this season there's been a lot of ups and downs a season with injuries season with you know lack of form at first it was away form and then now it's the home form and we just don't know if we have form or we don't i mean you know it's, but i want to get your take what do you think about this season and of course, where where do you expect us to be at, at the end? How long you got about this season? <laughs> we got a lot um, of time, man. We got a lot of time. <laughs> well, it's it's been it's been a it's been an upside down season, that's for sure. It really has. Um, has it been the season we expected it to be or wanted it to be? Probably not. Um, but for me, I just think honestly. The injuries have killed this season on our on our overall objectives. I think if you were to ask Eddie Howe up, up front, I think he would have said, for me, he'd be going for Champions League football again. He wanted Champions League football. And I just think off the back of that um, and those injuries, he's had to reevaluate what he's aiming for um, in, in Eddie Howe. Um, nobody could have expected the amount of injuries that we've had. Nobody could have expected that, in my mm. opinion. And so um, he's had to roll with the punches and have some really difficult moments. And I remember in December, I was really frustrated about the situation. I was kind of, you know, really annoyed at some players not putting it in and not doing what they should be doing um, or what we we're expecting them to do. But honestly, um, having look, look, looked back now and seeing what they're doing now, they've got a full week's rest in between games. You then start to understand what they were going through like playing every two or three days and having to go 100% without subs, 90 minutes, week after week after week, it takes its toll on players. 
And, you know, you see in the likes of Anthony Gordon starting to pick up form, Bruno Gamera starting to pick up form, and these guys were being ran into the ground uh, without subs, without support. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I kind of um, I, I re-evaluated my, my, my feelings on that. And uh, I think I was maybe quite harsh in, in December on some of these players and what they were being asked to do. Um, and I think I've re-evaluated my frustrations on Eddie Howe as well. He's made some decisions that have been questionable, but he's had to navigate us through a really, really difficult moment. Um, and, and for me, I respect him a lot more for that. Um, but if you're asking me now in terms of my um, expectations of where um, I, I think we should finish, for me, um, my expectation is no lower than seventh. And I believe at this moment in time, seventh gets his Europa Conference football. Our priority should be getting European football back-to-back -back seasons. That's, yeah. that's the aim. That's the aim. That's why I expect the Newcastle United. I think even with the players that are injured right now, with the squad that we have, hopefully with Willock, Isaac back, um, Ali Anderson coming back in, Pope back next month, that should be enough for us to secure European football. Because if you're asking me, do I think that that squad, even without Joe Linton and Callum Wilson, is better than the likes of Brighton, the likes of West Ham, the likes of Chelsea on current form, I would say yes. I think we're better. And I think we should be aiming for that now. There's an argument that we're better than Man United, but Man United just seem to pick up results where you don't expect them to pick them up. Case in point, Villa Park. And I just yeah. think they're always going to be there and thereabouts. It's whether we can accumulate enough points to get above them. Um, but I think top seven is the aim for me. Um, and I think it's achievable. With the games that we've got left this season, Definitely achievable, hundred percent. I think it's interesting if you um, if you would have offered this season as last season, and we finished seventh or sixth as in last season. I think most people would have seen that as quite a successful season. And then this season, let's say this season we were fourth and fighting for Champions League, people would have seen that as a general progression uh, in Newcastle and seen that sort of like rise of like, okay, so Eddie's got a plan. This is what he's doing. It's just it's difficult, but it's interesting that as stats we're actually better than last season. Like our goal scored is better than last season. Uh, we were a, penalty, a shocking penalty away from being in the knockout stages. Uh, we were a header from Trippier, terrible header away from being in a, I'm sorry, Middlesbrough, but I think we would probably be in the final against Liverpool in the, in the Carabao Cup final. I'm pretty confident we would have beaten Middlesbrough in two legs. Uh, and we're still in the FA Cup. So it's, some of the rub the green has been really against us as well. Um, so if you offer that, is a season that's pretty, you know, it's pretty bloody good that actually overall. Um, but I agree with you that if we finish seventh or sixth, I think that's actually for how much we've been through. I mean, tomorrow we're going to have to start no strikers again. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, we've just got to cope with what we can. What are, what are your thoughts on this, on this Callum Wilson stuff, man? I mean, it's just frustrating, <laughs> man. Pete. Um, first and foremost, I do feel sorry for him. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I do feel sorry for him. I know he's been getting a lot of stick on social media. Right. I know he's been getting a lot of, you know, hate and, oh, we should sell him and all the rest of it. And, and look, that's likely to happen. He is likely to be sold in the summer. There's no doubt about it, um, whether you like him or not. But I do feel sorry for him because he's not, he's not purposefully getting injured. He, right. he isn't. Like, I just... Um, if that was the case, then I'd feel differently. But he's not. He is committed to Newcastle United. He's trying his best. But sometimes people just pick up in injuries. And he is injury prone. He's proved it throughout his career. Um, and that injury at Forest, I was there. I was right in front of it. And it was it was one that if we'd have had that tussle 10 times, you know, the other nine times, he'd have come out of it unscathed. And it's just that one time that he picks up that pectoral injury where it, it puts him out for the best part of 12 weeks. And it's just, I, I feel sorry for him. But ultimately, we've got a team to back and, and, and a team that needs to get European football this season. So it's a massive blow. We haven't had Isaac and Callum Wilson fit together for any length of time this season. And they need to be together. fit. Mm. And um, so, again, we're having to go back to the, the drawing board. Um 
And I mentioned it to the loaded boys today, and I just think we do we have enough to see us through. I do. I, th- I think we. I think we do to get by. We have enough to see us through, providing that everyone stays fit. So you've got the option of, you know, Alexander Isaac's not far away, as Eddie Howe said today, and then you've got Anthony Gordon that can play up front. So you've got them as uh, uh, striker options. On the left-hand side, you've got Harvey Barnes back, who I'm so glad he's back because he's a talented player and he will make a difference to us at the back end of this season. And then you've got a returning Elliot Anderson, who actually is a left winger. He's not a left-sided of a midfield three. His right. position is a left winger. So you've got him potentially going there as an option. So there's your two maybe left wingers. And then you've got Murphy and Almiron on, on the right. OK, so your actual striker situation or attacking situation, providing they stay fit, we do have options. So that's not the worst thing in the world. And all mm-hmm. of those players that we've mentioned are capable of scoring goals. So it, you know, it's not like we're, we're going to be lost for goals. All those all those players can chip in and score. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But again, it goes back to the, the, the golden question, can they stay fit? And if they yeah. can... I genuinely think that we'll we'll win enough games that will secure us European football. But I feel sorry for Callum Wilson, but I think it just typifies his time on Newcastle United. He just hasn't played enough for us because if he had, he'd have had at least 30 more goals to his name in a Newcastle United shirt, that's for sure. But um, I think what it does now is solidifies in every Newcastle United fan's mind. And I want to get your opinions, Chris and Paul, as well. Um, for me, it solidifies everything in my mind and a lot of the Newcastle fans' minds that we need to get a striker in the summer. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess I can go first. I mean, it. You just don't. I mean, right now, Isak, and and this was going to be questioned later, uh, later for you, it, and, and so because <laughs> Isak, I, I, I got to be careful when I, when I when I put you know labels on, on players, of course, <laughs> when I do that, but. I mean, you, you. We got to admit, you know, we know what's in the air. And when Isak keeps getting hurt, he doesn't last long. He, he gets hurt again. Then you know, p- people start labeling players. I don't think he has a fully, you know, that that cloud over his head yet that the, a, a player made a glass. But uh, I mean, not like uh, Callum Wilson to say the least. But you know, it, it it's it's it's, cre- it's forming. It's getting there. And uh, and I think that again, when he's fit, he can be as dangerous as Hallen. I mean, I'm serious. I think he can be one of the best strikers in the league. Uh, but if you can't trust him to stay healthy, I mean, you got to. I think we should have gotten uh, anybody as a striker uh, in, in this past uh, window that we had. Anybody. Anybody can come on and just sub. Because Gordon, he doesn't like playing there. You can, I mean, he played there for England, and a lot of people go back to that. But you can tell he's not, you know, he, he it's not really his position. Especially when you're used to running all the time. You're used to a certain position. You're not going to adjust to it in one game or two games. Uh, to just all of a sudden you got to be quiet. You got you got you, gotta, you can't move. You got to just you know what I mean. It's not the same. So, um, and unfortunately, right now both can't play. You, you can't. You don't have strikers. So Gordon must be, he must be the one that starts. Who else can do it? Uh, you know, other than him, Almiron. I've I've seen him in back. You know, in in the MLS. I've seen him in South America. Every now and then play in the middle. But again, you're you're really reaching. You know, at this mm. point. So I don't know, Paul. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this has been this has been this season, hasn't it? It's just been, you know, we said it a few times in the past where it's been one or the other. So Wilson's been out, so Isaac's had to play game, 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 you know, over the top amount of games. And the problem with doing that is not just injury, it's fatigue. And people don't always understand fatigue. Uh, I'm trying to explain to them because when I was doing, you know, when I worked in A&E, um, I used to try to explain to people what fatigue was because they misunderstand it as being tired. But if you keep right. if you keep doing the same thing over and over again on a muscle, it does tire. And I, I know people think of tired as as in like, oh, he just needs a rest. No, it needs like actually time to heal and time to re- you know time to take time to like re- rebuild almost. And that's the problem that Isaac's had that over and over and over again. Then Wilson comes back fit, and then Isaac gets cropped, and then Wilson has to play game, 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 which we all know, bless him, he can't do. Uh, because of his uh, occurring injury. And this has just been our season. It's just been kind of, we get one back and then something happens. We get the other one back. We might have both at the same time for a very brief period. If something happens to the other one, then we have to overplay the other one. And that's just been the occurrence. This has just been Newcastle season. 
Um, and I think the big thing in summer is definitely, you know, if someone gets sold or not or whatever, you need that third person to just just even rotate it. Yeah. Because if we if we do finish in European spots, um, that's that competition. You've still got FA Cup. I'm sure Eddie Howe want to do well in Carabao Cup. That I'm sure Eddie, Eddie Howe want to do well in, and the Premier. League. I'm not saying we're going to win the Premier League, but you know we we'll want to finish in a decent position. So you've got all these competitions at once that you want to do well in, and you need you need people who can be fit and be consistent. And that's been that's just been the big thing that's let us down this season. Because I swear, if we had a fully fit, fully ready to go squad, uh, looking how the how the uh, league's been this year with how Yo Yo has been. I mean, you know, I know it's mad to say, but I still think we, I really do think that if we were firing all cylinders and we didn't have Tenali out and all of the rest, I think easily we could have been in the top three. Easily. Because no one's been consistent this year. Not even Man City have been consistent. You know, they're getting there now because they're getting more players back, but there's not been one team that's been like blowing people away. Like Liverpool have had the time where they've been up and down. Arsenal are a weird club at times, they hot and cold, but. Yeah, it's, it's just a shame that because I feel that this could have been a season to really attack. But, you know, it is what it is. Next season's our season. Yeah. I, 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 gen, I genuinely think it will be. I think, mm. we're, 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 I think we'll be primed to have a really good season providing we get the players that we want in the summer. But you made a really good point, Paul, um, with regards to, you know, the season and what we could have done. Mm. And actually... If you narrow it down, to, I always narrow it down. I've said it on Loaded before to two games. If we'd have won away at Luton and at home to Nottingham Forest on Boxing Day, that's six more points. That puts yeah. us on, it would put us on something like 40, 42 points, something like that. Um, and that puts us in the Champions League race. We're not in the top four, but we're certainly in that conversation. That's two games. That, forget Tottenham away when we lost, forget, uh, when we got hammered. Forget the Everton game that was just, I just want to erase from my memory at Goodison Park. <laughs> um, forget, you know, for, forget the, the, the quarterfinals of the Cup. Forget all of those other results off the back of that. At Anfield, Man City, the last minute, two minutes to go. We, we concede a, a, a late goal. We could have took a point there. Forget all of that. Those two games in isolation put us in a Champions League race. Yeah. That's how that's how close we were to being where we actually wanted to be. Just two games. And considering all those injuries, everything we've had to navigate through, even us saying, oh, it's not the season that we wanted it to be, those two games could have made it a hell of a lot different. And our outlook on it and the, the Premier League's outlook, the media's outlook, would have been so different had we won those two games. And the, the looting game really irked me um, at Kenilworth Road. I was so annoyed by that because mm. although a lot of Newcastle fans went into that game expecting us to lose, I knew we couldn't afford to lose because they were the two games. Having lost Everton and, and Tottenham, we had to win because of the January that we had. Fortunately for us, we had a monstrous performance against Villa. We should have took a point against Man City um, and we got a massive result away at Forest. So it makes things look a little bit better, but yeah. it, it could have been even better is the point I'm making. Um, mm. Appreciate Jordy Revolution for becoming a member of the channel. Appreciate that, brother. Um, I got a question. The Mighty Wayne wants to ask his idol, Pete Davey. Uh, with no injuries or drugs, <laughs> what would be? <laughs> what would, you know, mighty win is crazy, man. You know, it, he's just crazy. I love but him. what would be your starting eleven of the season? Oh, today, I guess. Um, sh should we go against Bournemouth? No, like uh, no, or just, just overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he means fully fit. Yeah, I think he means like fully right. fit. School. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. Um, <laughs> a fully fit Newcastle United looks like this for me. Uh, Nick Pope in goal. Right back, Kieran Trippier. Centre backs, um, Fabian Schoen and, and Sven Botman. And left back, Tino Livramento. Um, that's my back four. Um, the three midfield goes with Sandro Tonali. That's a number six. Um, Joe Linton. And Bruno Gamerez in the midfield. On the left hand side, Harvey Barnes. On the right hand side, Anthony Gordon. And up top, 
Alexander Isak. If you're asking me for my ideal 11, that's my ideal 11. And I think by the end of the season, bar Tonali and Joe Linton, I think we we could see pretty much that, uh, barring those two players that obviously um, uh, are not going to be available. Uh, I think we'll be getting close to that by the end. Uh, thank you to Gary for becoming a member as well. Appreciate that. You know, appreciate the support as usual. Um, now, what do you make of this? You know, Dan Byrne has been the most famous <laughs> man in Newcastle for the past couple of weeks. So, you know, you know, Pete, you're not about to escape from this interview without answering uh, about Dan Byrne. What do you think? I know you're going to be honest with it. So, you know, I, I need I need your opinion, man. Because I'm I'm struggling with some fans, but uh, you know what do you think? Burn, should Burn be playing, or at least should we accommodate for him to be in a better position on the pitch? Um, it's it's not a straightforward answer for me, and I think this is why it's been really difficult for Eddie Howe. Um, I think. In my opinion, I, I would have Tina Livermento playing, certainly in the last two games, just to combat some of the strengths that the opposition have in terms of their pace. You look at um, Alanga um, scoring the goal that he did, not, not necessarily just Burns' fault, but the, the, the times that he gets burnt for pace. You look at Luton and what happened at St. James's Park. You know, without those, those two goals, we, we end up winning the game. Um, and I just think he needs to be managed better. I'm not saying Dan Byrne needs to leave the club. He needs to be rid of. I'm not saying that he should be a squad player for Newcastle United because there are qualities there that he holds that makes him a really useful player, both on and off the pitch. Um, but for me, I, I think at times he's been thrusted into a situation where he's just not been able to manage very well. Um and I think the injury hasn't helped him. I think it's taken him longer to get back up to speed than he would have liked. Um, when you, you you when you break a bone in your back, it's it's not easy to get back into full fitness straight away, and we have to respect that. Um, but for me, um, I think some of the comments are really harsh at times. Recent weeks, over the top. I would go as far as on social media. Um, I think part of it is is not his fault. He's been selected. He's not going to turn down the opportunity to start games for Newcastle United and play for the club that he loves. There's no way he's going to do that. But maybe Eddie Howe selecting him maybe is, is, is the question mark there. And look, mm -hmm. there are times where it's worked. Fulham away, for example, he was superb in the FA Cup. Yeah. Got man of the match, scored a goal, but defensively, won every header, was solid down the left-hand side, never get them, gave him an inch for the vast majority of that game. Even against Villa, for He's long time, defended really, really well. It was only when Leon Bailey came on that yeah. he really started to struggle. But Eddie Howe did the right thing. Tino comes on, shuts up shop, done. Um, even to the point that after sort of the, the Alanga goal against Forrest, he has a decent game after that. He doesn't have a, a horrible, tormented game. He does quite. He, he does quite well in, in areas. And then they bring Tino on when we go three to up. We see out the game comfortably. And it just needs to be managed better. He needs to be looked after. He's yeah. what thirty two years old, so he's not a spring chicken. Like he's he needs to be he needs to be monitored and looked after properly. Um, and that needs to continue. But for me. If we need to progress as a club, and I, you know, I want to get your thoughts on this or what, what you think, but for me as a club, if we want to progress, we need a new starting left back next season. That doesn't mean that, he, that Dan Byrne gets sold. Right. He's a big figure, a leader in the, in, in, the, in the camp. We want to keep as many of those as possible. That's why Dummett and Richie are still around. But we need a starting left back that can do both jobs, attack, defend, good in the air. We, they need to be well-rounded. Uh, I don't know what you boys think about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, Ian, uh, thank you for for becoming a member again. See, you get Pete Davey on the show, man. People people become <laughs> members, man. You know, they see a famous guy on the show. You know, that's, that's what happens. But uh, thank you, Ian. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think if you want to be a, a title contender, a, a team that's, that's feared in Europe, which, you know, it does, it's not going to happen overnight, but 
the end of the day, again, I say this all the time, Rome wasn't built in a day, but it was built someday. And uh, <laughs> sometimes you got to, uh, and listen, it, it, it's hard sometimes to, to to get rid of, I know that word is even hard, that, that, that word itself, you know, get rid of, uh, of players that were loyal to you, that, that, that served you right, that did everything you wanted them to do. But uh, at some point in time, man, you, you want new. We all want Newcastle to to say, you know, or, or or pundits across the world to say, you know what, you got to watch out for Newcastle because they're coming to 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 Borussia and they're, you know, they're not an easy team. You know, if we if we want to be talked about like that, that means we're doing the right thing. That means we have uh, 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 the uh, the quality of players. Not to say that these aren't quality, but you know, you almost have to be apologetic every time you say something like this uh, because people don't like it, but. If we want to move forward, if you want to be a big club in Europe and across the world, at some point, mm -hmm. you must uh, get players of a better, a bigger name, I guess I would say. But uh, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, I think I agree. You know, like I say, like, I don't want Dunman to go anywhere. He he lives and breathes Newcastle. You can see how much he loves playing. And people seem, uh, I know people get mad at some people when they say this following sentence, but it is true. I know people don't like it, but last season he was part of one of the best defences in the whole of the Premier League. The only team that equaled it was Manchester City. That's no, that's no like mean feat to do that. Do you know what I mean? That's 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 pretty impressive to to be that well defend. You know, in, in, a, in a position that isn't rightfully his, uh, not not his natural position at all. And for a big guy, he he has he's had some outstanding performances for Newcastle. He's won us. Yeah. He's won us games. He's, you know, you know, I've seen people seem to forget that this guy's done stuff for us. It really does matter, um, and it does frustrate me when people get. You know, well, we know what Twitter's like. It's just a, it's a weird place. That there's a lot of lovely people there and they're amazing people, and there's also the people who, if we lose one 0 to Man City, say to, that Eddie Howe needs to be sacked because he's not good enough or a big enough name. It's there's there's different different levels to this, but I agree that you know next season. You know, I, I think that Tina was brought in as the next starter. And I think what's exciting for me is a bit like Anthony Gordon, thinking of Tino and having a proper full preseason with that bit between his teeth, uh, being Eddie Howe fit. You know, as Gordon said, that he wasn't really Eddie Howe fit yet. Um, and he's just got to understand like, what, what is wanted of him. It's quite an exciting prospect having like an Eddie Howe fit, Tino Livermento as your starting left back. Um, and then you do have options if he's not having a great game or whatever you know you, you have options there and Dan Burn is one of those you know he's not your first option I guess but he's someone who you know can do a brilliant job uh yes he gets done for pace but I'm sorry some of the lads that have done it for pace they do most of the left backs in the Premier League for pace because they're good players you know I think um the lad from um Luton I think isn't he isn't he on record as like the fastest run of the season already is yeah, it him or is it gordon i know gordon yeah. is up there yeah you're right um, yeah. Or, so, or actually i think he's been taken over by somebody now right i can't think who it, who it is i'm not sure if it's a tottenham player but he right. was for a long period the, the yeah. fastest player in the premier league you're right but do you know what i mean so that means that just because i get it dan burns a slow player but put someone else there anyone else in the premier league They'd have a game against him. Doesn't mean, mm. you know if you're a fast player or not. Like he's he's a quick guy, and Dan Burn isn't. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that you know. As Pete said, it's you know Dan Burn's not going to turn on to Eddie and go, "Hang on, mate, Livermore should be starting over me, mate. Don't put me on." He's going to, of course, go. I'll start. No problem. I'll, I'll go on because he's you know he wants to play, and that for me, I'd rather that than having. I mean, you know, you're not to get over negative, but I'd rather have had someone like Sissoko back in the past. I know he's not the same position, who had Tottenham in here and couldn't care less. You know, couldn't have cared less what he's doing for us. He had Tottenham on his brain uh, and, and the cells let him know about it. You know, I'd rather have players like Byrne who want to be here and want to play than players who are going, well, what's my next move? I don't care if this club get relegated. You know, no thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um one, I, I'm gonna put this question up that Julie's asking for you, Pete, and then we gotta we're gonna move on to uh, to some fiery questions, man. I'm gonna put you on the ropes, uh, and uh, before we finish up on the show, so Julie asked, "What do you got? Well, what did Pete think about uh, Lewis Hall not, not getting much game time? What do you think about that?" Um, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm surprised by it. Um, I on unloaded, we had a kind of conversation about this in the summer after he signed and what 
what we thought would happen with both Hall and Livermento. And I, I, I thought their, their trajectories at Newcastle would be quite similar. Uh, maybe slightly behind for Hall, but that they would start on the bench and then once they're given an opportunity, would then stake their claim and by the end of the season, be regulars in the team. Now, Livermento is closer to doing that, not far away at all. Um, but Lewis Hall just hasn't been given game time. And I go back to that... Um, I go back to that Man United game at Old Trafford when he scored and he played left back and I thought he was terrific that game. I really thought that would be the catalyst and the the game that kind of yeah. really kicks him on. Um, and it just doesn't seem to have happened. And it just seems to me that Eddie Howe just doesn't quite see that he's ready. He might have not. He might have noticed something in training or or seen that he needs to, to develop an area of his game, but he just. For, for whatever reason, he just might not seem ready to be able to take on um, that mantle of being a regular left-back or regular starter for Newcastle United. Now, that doesn't mean he's not going to be successful. It doesn't mean that he's a flop. It doesn't mean anything like that. The boy's just, you know, he's only just turned, or not long turned, 19 years old. He's still a young lad. He's got loads of time in his career to develop. But um, <laughs> what I would say is that if that transfer is made permanent which it looks like it's going to be done um that development we're going to need to see next season we're going to need to see an improvement not not that he's going to be this all singing all dancing left back that's going to be tearing the league apart but we need to see a progression in him we need to see that year upon year development to know that he's going to be the guy that takes us forward because if he ends up having two three flat years or maybe two three years where he has bad loan not getting enough games or all the rest of it and before you know it he's 21 22 and not really kicked on then we've got a little bit of a problem there right. and so I, I need to see that development kick in and that improvement next season but I, what, what do you boys think uh, well, Paul has been enlightening me on, on, on. He believes that he he we might have a you know I don't know. Well, we, how, what would you say, Paul? Like an attitude problem? There's or been a... some. There's been some things. Um, and again, people are going to moan and piss and say, "Oh, he's pretend to be in the know and all this." Right, fine, that's fine. It's okay. Um, I'm not pretending to be in the know or anything, but I do. You know, there is there is someone I trust who I talk to a lot, and I've been. You know, this person's been right on a few things over the, in the last ten years. I've been friends with this person, and he's told me he told me stuff about Maxi. He told me stuff about Paul. And like I said the thing with Hall has been a big attitude problem. He comes in late. He misses training often. He's uh, missed. Uh, he's been out drinking when he's not meant to be. Uh, there's been a few. There's been a few things there that has annoyed um, Eddie and the coaching staff of him. Um, and there's been a few problems there. Um, you know, like I said. People can say I'm making it up and it's all rubbish. Now that's cool. Like I said, uh, this guy had the same stuff about Maxi, and it's the same reason that uh, Maxi kind of got kicked out. Uh, not you know more of an attitude thing than being a good player. Mm. I love Maxi, but it was the same sort of difference that he would often be late. He'd often be uh, you know just going to France when he wanted <laughs> you know bits and pieces. As much as I love Maxi, uh, there was a lot of things that would happen there. Um, but like I say, it's just yeah, that's one of the things of Paul is that uh, there has been some few a few bits and pieces like that that's happened. Yeah, uh, and they, we'll see we'll see how all that develops at the end of the season. Um, now we got I got to put you on the ropes, man. You know we got to <laughs> we got to do it. Every guest comes on and we got to we got to do this. We got you got to uh, you got to make a series of choices, and every choice has a consequence. Pete. Uh -huh. you know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, you got to choose between. We're going to get started. We got to choose between going to, uh, say, your kid's birthday party or somebody that means a lot to you, or go to a final, Champions League final that Newcastle's playing in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, honestly, I think if any of my family members know me, they would know. I can't miss that final. Uh, <laughs> they, they know. They know the week previous, <laughs> the week after, they are going to get all of me. They're going to get all the celebrations. They're going to get all the, the presents, the trimmings, the lot. They're going to get everything. But for that one game, it was in a final. 
chance of winning a trophy in my lifetime. Anybody that knows me and knows uh, me close enough knows how much I love this club. And if you're giving me a chance of a final. Yeah, man. I guess they don't care about the kids, man. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'll be be honest with you. If I'm going to a final, uh, my daughter's a uh, Newcastle fan. Um, I took her to her first game a couple of years ago and uh, um, uh, she plays football herself and she's like, she loves it. Like, I'd be wanting to bring her with me. So if it was like, if it was her birthday, like, it'd be like, we have to go. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to put it. You can't you, be, you, that's, can't a, that's a that's a last last minute save right there that you just did. <laughs> that's, that's, always that's, thinking, that's, always a, that's, that's a Shay Given save right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, next one. Uh, complete the phrase: Newcastle will win the Premier League in what year? Um. Oh, Newcastle will win the Premier League in two thousand twenty nine. 2029. All right. We got we got five more years, man. Damn. I thought you were about to say next year, man. I was gonna get happy. <laughs> I hope it is. I hope it is. But look, um, I, I've said it before and I've said it again. Um, this uh and we knew quite early on that this takeover, although the owners are the richest in the in the world, um, and the richest owners to ever own a football club, um we're, we're not going to do a, a Man City and a Chelsea. This was always going to be progressive. And partly that's because of the fact that the FFP profit and sustainability rules are in place where they weren't for Man City to the way that they are now and, and they weren't at all for Chelsea. But secondly, is that the Premier League are doing everything in their power to go through every little detail of Newcastle United's progression with a fine tooth comb. And everything is under scrutiny. And because of that, for me, that's why it's going to take longer. Like, we will get there. I've said it before and I've said it again. We will get there. We will develop our team to be earning and generating enough money more so than any of those top six. We will eventually get there. We will start to be able to, year on year, be able to spend more money. Sponsorships, players, all of that stuff will come. But as Newcastle United fans, we will face... We 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 were having to be patient for fifteen years, nearly, with Mike Ashley, mm. before we got him gone. Some people thought he'd never leave. We had to be incredibly patient for that. Now, if we can wait fifteen years for him to go, I think we can wait another extra few years to get our hands on what we want, which is the big trophies. The and I, and I'm not saying that we might not win a big trophy before then, an FA Cup. A Carabao Cup, although some people don't see it as a big trophy, I do. So it's, it's one of the yeah. big trophies to win in this in this country. A Carabao Cup, an FA Cup, you know, a European Cup. Who's to say that we don't get Europa Conference League next season and go and win that competition, which is a winnable competition? I think right. if we get if we finish in seventh and get Europa Conference, I can see us in twenty uh, in twenty twenty five lifting that trophy. I genuinely can. Um, and so it doesn't mean that we're not going to win a trophy till then, but if you're looking at the big one, the Premier yeah. League, we want more than any, any, we, with Man City being the way they are, we might have to just be patient and go up in increments and slowly build to be able to fight them. I genuinely think Man City feel that the next big club that will challenge them for a title is, is Newcastle United. All right. The next one is, so you said 2029. So in two years, Newcastle wins the FA Cup. But Sunderland get promoted next year. And in that year that I'm mentioning, they also win the Premier League. Do you take that deal? We're titleless. Right. So Newcastle win the FA Cup in two years. But but Sunderland also wins the Premier League. Do you accept that deal? (laughs) Uh, I'm not sure I do. (laughs) <laughs> for, for one, this whole question is lies. Because <laughs> hey, you don't promoted. know. You they're don't not know. getting promoted. They are not getting promoted. <laughs> they are going to languish. If they're anything. certainly not winning the Premier League. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? This is, a, this, is a, this is how much of a fan you and Steve Wraith have asked the same. Warren Barton have asked the same. They all struggle. They like it's not. They know it's not going to happen, but they're struggling. You know, you guys are struggling to, 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 just, to just, you know, play the game. 
You know, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. <laughs> but yeah, so you, but would you take the deal? We haven't won anything. It's our shot. I, I, I'm not sure I take that. I'm not sure I take that deal. Right. I, I, I'd be confident in any other season that we win a trophy somewhere else. Um, so I'm not. It's not like that's the only year that we're going to win the trophy. But <laughs> Sunderland winning the Premier League in the same year that just that just kind of that just kind of trumps anything that we do, and that's not what that's not what it should be. But, but, but it's lies anyway. They're going back to League One before they come to the Premier League. Yeah. No, no chance. All and then right. we're back up. Um, who's your and if they do, we're going to put them back down again. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. That's the attitude, brother. Uh, who's your football idol? Who'd you grow up watching? Um, there's been a few, I'm not going to lie, over the years. Um, a few really kind of important ones for me when I was playing football myself um, that I looked up to. Um, I've already said before, Andy Cole is the reason why I support Newcastle United. I love the guy. I was in bits. I was in tears when he signed for Man United um, and left us. Um, players like Alan Shearer. I, I modelled my game on him when I played myself and uh, I looked and studied the way he played football. Um, Ronaldinho for his silky skills and his ability. One of the, for me, underrated in terms of one of the best ever. For me, he's up there. Ronaldinho didn't have the longevity of a career, but he was sensational. Yeah. And um, the biggest one for me, and there's always this debate about Messi and Ronaldo. But for me, Cristiano Ronaldo was an idol. Like I, I, he's He is the guy I look up to as a player. Um, reasons being is that... He's not naturally gifted. Messi was naturally gifted and um, like a superhuman player is Messi. But Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't gifted. He worked hard day and night, still does now, approaching 40, um, to craft, uh, to hone his craft and to be the player and successful the way he is. Every player that he's played with says the same. He's the first in training. He's the last one to leave. He has built his career through hard work and commitment and dedication to see what he's done over his career for someone that wasn't naturally gifted i think it's just outstanding um i followed him from when he signed for man united all the way through his career real madrid um juventus back to man united and then out to saudi and i just i admire everything he's done he's not been the best all the way through but i admire what he's done but certainly from a newcastle perspective the likes of andy cole the likes of alan shearer um absolutely kind of stick in my mind as those players that I admire more more than than anybody. Um that's for sure. All right. Um what is something that you hate about what surrounds Newcastle? It could be the 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 crazy fans, not everybody I'm saying like fans that just get on Twitter and talk smack, maybe some journalists, something you must must annoy you. Um the one thing that sur that annoys me that surrounds Newcastle United is not even related to Newcastle United. It's the London bias mm. that impacts Newcastle United, yeah. um, and it has it has for years. Um, ever since I've supported the club, um, there is a and more so now in the last 15, 20 years, there is a massive London bias um, where they will prioritise a West Ham. And they'll prioritise any other London club, even a Crystal Palace, for example, ahead of someone like Newcastle United. And um, they'll do that because a lot of these TV stations, a lot of the media base are based in London and they don't want to travel north. Um, and they don't want to kind of do a lot of their work supporting um, or following or reporting on a club that's at the top of, um, at the top of, the, of England. Um, and that's just the reality. There was years going back where they hated travelling to the Northwest, to Liverpool, to Man City, to Man, Man United and report on it. They prefer to stay in London. And there is, no matter what anybody says, a London bias there. And, and Newcastle get affected by that the most. Um, we get downplayed. We get disrespected. We don't get given our flowers in the way in which I think we, we deserve at times. Um, and that's the one thing I hate more than anything. Um, because I tell you what, some of these clubs 
your West Ham's, although uh, the people that support these clubs are respect, but your West Ham's, your Palaces and and even your Brentford's and whoever, if they were anywhere else in this country, they wouldn't get half of the coverage that they get. Um, but yeah, that's the one thing that grinds on me a lot. Great, great. Uh, the last one, you got to choose current St. James's Park or a new St. James's Park in a different location. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're asking me I've got two answers for this Newcastle United has to stay at St James's Park it is an iconic stadium not just in this country but in world football it is an iconic stadium the cathedral at the top of the hill there's nothing more than I uh, that I love that when I drive up north and I drive past the Angel of the North. I take a picture of it every time. Every time. Angel of the North, I take a picture of it. And then in the distance, you can see St. James's Park right mm. at the top of that hill. There is no better feeling than that. You ask any opposition fan that drives up to Newcastle United, when they get there, when they see that stadium, they go, wow, that is amazing. Um, and to take that away would be to take that would be taking so much away of what our club is built on. Um, the, the the fear factor, the the aura, everything about that, um, about that stadium would be taken away. Um, so for me, if you could find any way of redeveloping that stadium and adding another 15, 20,000 fans in there, go do it. Go pay what you need. Pay over the top to do that because you will make that stadium one of the best in the world. It already is, but you'll put it on a level that is alongside all of these brand new stadiums. You just would. Um, however, in reality, for me, I think Newcastle United fans do need to be prepared for that conversation in which we do eventually move in the next five years or so. Because as success continues to build, there will be a conversation that needs to be had to say, in if we need to continue to build and generate that revenue and bring it in, we need a new stadium. And I think that's a really tough conversation for our owners to have with Newcastle United fans that have lived and breathed this club for their whole lifetimes. Um, but I genuinely think that's a conversation and a difficult conversation that the owners will need to have with Newcastle United fans with us in the next three or four years. I genuinely believe that. But if you're asking me, we stay at St. James's Park. We do anything we can to rebuild. And I think they want to do that. But I think it's proven really difficult right now. And I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Uh, we have to call it off. It's been a great, great show uh, with Pete Davey. Uh, I'm going to finish it with this comment by Fox. He says, great show, guys. Top guy, Pete, is... Every Tune fan should also subscribe to the Loaded Mag's brilliant Newcastle United channel. And I'm posting the link to the Loaded Mag right now on the chat. We're about to finish up. Subscribe to their channel. It's, it's an amazing it's, a, it's an amazing show. It really is. You know, uh, you know, you, you guys are essentially, pi you know, pioneer this, this, this Newcastle uh, content creation on YouTube. And uh, you guys have been doing a, an amazing job. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be able to, to have you on the show, brother. So appreciate you. Anything that you need, you let me know, and uh, we'll make it happen. Uh, and of course, you know, again, it's been it's been an absolute, you know, pleasure to have you on, Brad. No, I, I, honestly, I've really, really enjoyed the chat. It's been a great chat with yourself, Chris and Paul. Um, great to kind of finally meet you in the and and have a bit of a chat about all things in Newcastle. But what what I always say on Loaded, I'll say the same here as well and everywhere else is that. I'm no different to anybody else, no different to you, Chris, no different to you, Paul, no different to anybody else in the chat, no different to Daz or Chris at Loaded. Um, we're just Newcastle United fans. We're all yeah. the same. We're yeah. all Newcastle United fans that just love this <clears> club. <throat> um, and yes, we get the the, the pleasure and the benefit of, of putting on shows and being able to talk about Newcastle United, but that's a, that's a pleasure. That's an honour for us. It doesn't mean that we're any better or any worse than anybody else. We're not. We're just Newcastle United fans all the same, and this is what we love. You've got a great community here. Anybody, and I see a number of people that, that come and watch us on Loaded Mag and the FC, you're here tonight. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Great, great content, boys. Keep up the great work, and um, it's been a pleasure. I'd love to come back again. Um, I'd love you to have the, the Loaded Boys on as well. 
um, sure. at some point down the line. And of course, um, Chris, um, Paul will be in touch and it'd be a pleasure to to get you on the channel and, um, and join us for a chat sometime. Of course, of course. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button. And again, the Loaded Mag in UFC on YouTube. We'll see you guys on the next one. Do it, do it, do it, do it.